I had a couple people ask me um, to provide a real world example of the Holly FI idle chop table. So we're going to quickly set one up in the software and I can link the old video that kind of steps it through more in detail. And we're going to get it going off a virtual switch on the Pro Dash and then we'll fire up the car, get it idling, warmed up and everything. And then we'll be able to enable the switch on and off and show the difference back to back. So I'm just going to open up my current file that I have. And we're going to create an input, Oops. which I already did right here. So I called it idle chop switch, and that's going to be my virtual switch on the Pro Dash. And it's going to be a ground. Make sure to enable it. And it's going to say not defined initially. So then in your pin map, you're going to go to view LCD. And you're going to drop that onto switch number one here. And this is going to go to your Pro Dash. And then we're going to take advantage of creating an output that's triggered by this input so that we can add more parameters such as coolant temp, vehicle speed, TPS. That way it's not trying to oscillate timing while you're trying to like drive the car um, and it fights you. So it's going to leave that table once you go into tip in or anything like that or when the car is cold and it's warming up. So we're going to go to our outputs. And I made this idle chop table output. It's ground output, it's enabled, and we're gonna go to configure here. So we've got a switch input trigger, which is our idle chop switch from the Pro Dash is enabled. And we've got all these different parameters that must be satisfied. RPM's gotta be above 400. It's gotta be below 1000, so in your idle range. Coolant temp above 160 degrees. I associated that with where my idle speed kind of levels out right here at 750 RPM at 160 is when I have the idle chop come in. TPS below 3%, that way when you go into tip in, it's not still trying to oscillate timing on you. And then also speed below 10 mile an hour. So then we're gonna to go to our advanced table. It's gonna be a 1D table. Go ahead and enable the table, label it your idle chop. It's gonna be a timing offset. X, -ax X axis is RPM. And here we're gonna do our switch to enable and it'll activate when the idle chop table is enabled. And that idle chop table again has to be the idle chop virtual switch enabled and all of those temps and RPM requirements as well. And right now it's set at, we gotta adjust this a little bit so we look back at my target idle and it comes down to 750 RPM at 160. So we're going to shoot for it to oscillate around 750. We'll go back to our table here. All right, then we'll adjust our RPM. So we're going to set this to be 750. We're going to go over here to 900 and we're just going to fill row values here uh, let's put that lower like 500 and we'll fill the values there so now it'll get in this timing oscillation at 750 rpm is what we're targeting and then once you go past 788 you'll pull five degrees 825, pull 10, and it's going to bring idle back down. And once it swings past the 750, it's going to add timing, and you're just going to get stuck in oscillation. So let's go ahead and send this to the car, and we'll set up the virtual switch, and then we'll test it out. Make sure you USB link.
We're going to go ahead and send this to the ECU. Alright, now everything else can be done on the dash, so we're going to close out of this. Alright, we're going to set up the virtual switch. Make sure that you cycle the power once you push the tune over, otherwise it'll not update with the parameters. So we'll go find a random page right here, and we're going to go menu customize. That's really hard to read. Hit OK. I already got a switch here, but we'll delete it and start fresh. So you're going to click add a switch. You're going to click here, and we assigned it to switch number one on the view LCD and the pin map on the, on the laptop. So we're going to go ahead and select that, and we can change the label of that to spell right idle chop okay and you can go ahead and change this to whatever you want you know a slider or a rocker switch or whatever but we're just doing this for an example so we go ahead and move this a little bit like so and we'll save it so now this idle chop right here is tied to the ECU and that advanced table output with all those parameters to enable the timing oscillation. So we'll go ahead and fire up the car and then we'll warm it up past 150, 160 degrees and then we'll see if we can switch enable it. the timing oscillation that it's stuck in it's just pulling 20 add 20 pulling 20 add 20 and then here you can actually see the value it's just bouncing around like crazy so we're still targeting 750 rpm but it's just pulling timing adding timing, pulling timing adding timing watch the ignition timing here and you're gonna see this red dot move around because of rpm bouncing 
So this is enabled right now. And you can see this large swing in ignition timing. And then when I turn it off, I believe if I turn off idle spark as well, it's gonna make it even more aggressive. And the car will stay around long enough for it to Idle Spark is adaptive to try and maintain that 750 RPM. So it's going to add or remove Spark for you up to a point. I think it's like 10, 12 degrees, something like that. Nothing like this 20 degree oscillation that we have here. So that would be fighting you if you kept that on. Whereas now it gets pretty rowdy. And if you lay into the throttle or anything like that, then you come out of this table. All right back in and start swinging time it again and there you have it all right so hopefully that gives you a good example of just this idle chop table i don't use it in this car because i'm already cammed and it chops naturally but uh there's some people that like to do it so here's an example if you had a more mild cam or a factory cam and you did this it obviously have a much larger change This old granny car already chops pretty good. So, anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one.